All right. Chapter 7 of Inequalities and Identities. Inequalities in Law and Justice. Several years ago, when my younger son was still in high school, he and I watched a television about the 100 scariest movie moments of all time. The scenes taken from the grainy classic horror films of the 1920s, as well as the high-tech multi-million dollar blockbusters of today, range from creepily suspenseful to graphically gruesome. Although many of the clips were terrifying or disgusting, truly, we both slept well that night, comfortable in the knowledge that everything we saw was phony. These movies were meant to entertain. Evil villains, reptilian monsters, space aliens, cyborgs, demons, malevolent dolls, beasts, no, and bloodthirsty clowns were nothing more than actors, animatronic beasts, or computer-generated freaks. The blood, gore, and decapitations were merely makeup, camera, and CGI tricks. The shocking surprises were simply the products of skillful film editing and tension-building musical soundtracks. Had these films been documentaries about real evil in our midst, we might have been scared out of our wits. He's a poet and didn't know it. <laughs> but even the most ingenious Hollywood effects seem amateurish compared with the actual tales of cruelty and mayhem that have left their blood smears on the historical record. The Torture Museum in San Guillermo, Italy, houses one of the world's most extensive collections of ghastly devices and flick invented for inflicting agony on and ultimately destroying people. Among them are the Inquisition chairs, upholstered with flesh-piercing metal spikes that were common instruments of torture in Europe until the 1800s. See, I told y'all those people were the masters of evil. Rape, murder, and... <clears throat> Robbery is all that they known for. <laughs> I mean, every form of destruction. They've they've almost mastered the art of it. Well, I'm not gonna say mastered the art of destruction, but mastered the art of being destructive. That's it. They've mastered it. <laughs> we about to read about it now. Starting in Italy. Let's see, where were we at? Do -do. All right, Inquisition chairs, 1800s. Another device, the wooden horse, consisted of a wooden saddle in an upside down V shape. The victim would be forced to straddle the saddle Weights would then be placed on their feet one by one. The mounting pressure would eventually split the body in half. Crime and too much punishment. 1997. When you think of the time and ingenuity it took to concoct these devices, you're left with the inescapable conclusion that medieval humans were at their creative best when thinking up ways to inflict pain on others. The museum pieces may be curiosities of the past, but as a species, we are no less brutal nowadays than 500 years ago. Consider Ariel Castro, the middle-aged Cleveland man who kidnapped three teenage girls between 02 and 04. He raped, tortured, and held them captive until their escape in 2013. Or what about Chris Watts, the Colorado man who murdered his wife and two small daughters and then disposed of the girls' bodies in oil tanks and burned his wife in a shallow grave near where he worked. Accounts of such cruelty sounds like they have come off the pages of a Hollywood script. 
As troubling as such incidents are, what is especially upsetting is that the made the majority of pain and mayhem we impose on one another today is rarely this personal and podcast worthy. When it comes to violence and cruelty, some people, because of their race, class, gender, religion, or sexuality, have a greater chance of being victimized than others. You know, it's some of us out there that don't believe that. I had one guy put on a post. He said, talking about that movie where the lady's working in a male job like in the 70s or something, 80s, and uh, she gets assaulted by this guy at work. He basically throws her on the ground and jumps on top of her. But he's not really trying to hump on her. He's... It doesn't make sense because he says you, you're going to learn the rules around here. So, I don't know what you call that. Because it's not like he's he's sexually assaulting her. Even though what he's doing could be taken somewhat sexual in nature. You know? He's not doing any pelvic thrusts or anything of that nature. He's like like manhandling her. Like, like but would you do that to a dude, though? I, I, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing doing that to a dude. Bullying a dude in that manner. I'm, I'm not seeing that at all unless you're one of those uh, foreigners that get down with the homosexual crowd. You know what I'm saying? Get down with being clowns. Uh, other than that, no, ain't no man going to get on top of another man, push a man down on the ground and get on top of him to get up in his face and be like, you going to learn the rules around here. Think you, 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 you something special. Nah, it. It ain't happening. So, yeah. Sexual harassment, definitely. Uh, Let's see here. Where were we? Oh, yeah. As troubling as such incidents are, what is this? Oh, I already read that. (laughs) Consider this brief sampling of events that occurred in recent past. A homosexual, I'm not saying gay, because there's nothing happy about that lifestyle, okay? So y'all need to stop that right now. It's not gay, it's homosexual, okay? It is what it is. You're the one that publicly chose to share your perverseness. You don't see the dude that, like a dominatrix, posting that all on his wall and all on you know, television talking about how he liked to get whipped and it's personal. That stuff is personal. So why y'all talking your personal business and then you want to be recognized about it like it's normal? Ain't nothing normal about that. Nothing. If everybody was like that, the world would end. Humanity would end. Everyone would die and there would be no more babies. So that in itself tells you something's wrong. Come on. It's not my job to appease these people in their fantasy. Because that's exactly what it is. A fantasy. And you need to wake up. And we need to stop acknowledging that crap. Because it's bogus. That's your personal business. Just like me liking brick houses is my personal business. You know what I'm saying? Bad mama jamma got all the curves. I mean, all every last one. I'm talking that that curve on the thigh. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? That. Oh, and oh, and. Oh, come on. 
as a man. How can you not like that? Huh? Huh? See, you're confused. And I understand it. I totally understand. There's only two types of people in the world. Okay? We'll call them A and B. Now, if they have children together, no problem. No problem at all. Comes out normal. But if two A's or two B's have a child together, uh-uh, uh-uh, not going to work. Birth defects. That's what is happening and has happened to all of these people out there. There are varying levels of birth defects in the world. And when you see people doing the crazy stuff that they be doing, that's the reason why. <laughs> it can be attributed to them having two parents that were too closely related. So, you have what you have. And because of that, because there's varying levels of mental illness in the world, you have people like homosexuals, that male and females, publicizing their personal business. What intelligent, sane person puts their business on the street? They don't. They don't. Only people who are touched and not talking about by an angel. They're the only ones that do that because they're not wrapped too tight. But, you know, it is what it is. Some choose to get help and get that help later on. And then some of y'all just keep walking around like you normal. Okay. Whatever floats your boat. If that's working for you, if that's how you've been prospering and building wealth in your life, going on in your sickness, more power to you. But if it's been a hindrance to you, preventing you from fully obtaining all of that potential that you may have, I'd advise you to go get some counseling. You know what I'm saying? You can start with prayer. You know, our Father... Which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yeah, it worked for me. Oh, my word. Once I started praying for things to happen in my life, the Lord started opening up doors of what I thought were impossibilities. <laughs> That's what I call them, because things that are impossible and my capabilities were combined. And now I have impossibilities. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Now, let's get back to this uh, reading. A homosexual college student in Wyoming is pistol whipped. Now, I wonder if they just figured he was homosexual from looking at him or if he went around blabbing saying he was homosexual because had he have kept it to himself this might not have happened I'm just keeping it real tied to a fence and left to die wow wow at his funeral protesters from a church in Topeka, Kansas held up signs reading God hates fags. Quote, unquote. The church's website has a picture of the man depicted burning in hell. 
they're pretty extreme. <laughs> well, maybe not because that's probably his scenario. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Lord does not accept nor condone the open practice or private practice of homosexuality. So, yeah, that sign was was accurate, but it was it was very uh, unkind, shall we say? And uh, yeah, derogatory, defamatory, <laughs> so many things. Next story. A few years later, an 18-year-old Colorado woman is beaten to death with a fire extinguisher. The man accused of killing her tries to justify his action by telling the police that he attacked her when he found out that she was biologically a man. After the two met online and had a sexual encounter. Ooh. Okay. Once again. That stuff will never be accepted. Never. It will It will never be accepted. So why y'all trying to force it on people? You might as well just go back in the closet and, you know what I'm saying, live your life carefree because you ain't got to worry about nobody trying to kill you no more. And, oh, yeah, that last example was uh, definitely wrong on their part. Because ain't no way in the world you don't tell somebody up front. You know what I'm saying? You don't you don't not tell them before they do something. You you make that clear in the beginning, unless they're posing themselves as one of those people that get down with that. Then you can uh then maybe you can get away with not saying anything until after. Because they said they, they mess with people like that. But, nah. No. Honesty is the best policy. It's always best to just be honest about it. If that's what you are, that's what you are. You know what I'm saying? There's people out there that's into that. I mean, you might not be attracted to them. But you didn't screwed yourself up now, Frankenstein. You didn't turn yourself into... A monster because nothing on you works now nothing you cannot practice you cannot participate in the reproduction in the reproductive practice reproduction practice any further when you was a biological male your stuff worked so you could have had a baby but now that you didn't turn yourself into Frankenstein, you can't have no babies. That's over. So, yeah, I don't know what you was expecting, but, uh, well, we see how that worked out for him. Don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Not only are you mutilating your body, that's why, that's why they need psychiatric help. That stuff is a mental illness. Whether you want to accept that or not. What else would make you mutilate your body? Huh? Other than a mental illness. Perfectly fits the description of mental illness. Thinking that you are the opposite of what you are. I mean, come on. Physically, anyone can clearly see. Now, if you're a homorphodite, that's one thing. I can understand you having the surgery. Get rid of one of them situations, and probably the easiest thing to do is the penis. If you got a working vagina, I'd go with that. But, yeah. You know we all start out as female and then at a certain point you either get testosterone or estrogen and 
you got one of those double letter parents, they both A's or both B's, you might have got an imbalance. So I understand you say you feel like a girl when you a boy. I understand you say you feel like a boy when you a girl. Totally understand it. But that does not mean you keep going in the wrong direction. How about if you a female like that, you start taking estrogen instead of taking testosterone. Like, why would you why would you take something that you were never meant to have? Why that that's totally illogical. Mental illness, like why why would you do that? And vice versa. You a dude that feel feminine, girly, why would you take estrogen when you should be getting testosterone? You know what I'm saying? Especially at a young age, pump them full of it. They still develop it. It's a chance he might turn normal. Because right now, he a bit of abnormal. Yeah. And if he start wanting to cross-dress, he even more abnormal. And if he end up wanting to transition, great Scott, he's hit the moon of abnormality. Because guess what you going to be? A mutant, baby. A mutant. And you know this? Yeah. So, why do that to yourself? Why? 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 Makes absolutely no sense at all. Anyway, we're back now. Until next time, peace.